Okay, so perfect. So um, what is uh, today is about is a it's a it's the, your orientation to you as mentors by myself. Um, I hope that soon um, uh, Dr. Sires will be uh, joining us, maybe a couple of more mentors because we do have a, a number more um, who hopefully will be joining us. Um, my name is George Tote. I go by George. I've been involved with uh, IESA uh, and RIAS uh, for a while. Uh, and I, IESA since, I think, must be 2000, since 2005 or something. So since, uh, um, I think, the Ottawa Con Congress. So uh, it's been a long time and I've been in a variety of, of uh, capacities. And, and uh, um, I've, I, I know a number of you. And I really, really appreciate your kindness in in volunteering to be mentors. Um, I hope that they that our 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 hopes, our dreams, come true with the fact that uh, hopefully that there will be some folks who will decide from the from the mentees to eventually run for office uh, at in ISI and RIAS, and uh, hopefully they'll be you know our our fellow officers or our you know, our uh, successors. Um, so I will be doing the orientation, and these are and these are the two people who are uh, sort of your contacts for the for the for the mentoring program. The mentoring program is officially called the ISA uh, Emerging Scholar uh, Fellowships um, Program. So we have now fifteen fellows. Um, I am uh, one of the two uh, liaisons or one of the two coordinators. The other one is do Dr. Jessica Sires. She uh, recently earned a PhD in comparative literature from the University of Edinburgh. She's currently on the jobs market and so that she, she might be uh, uh, late uh, because of that. So this is the uh, what we will be talking about today. And so yeah. basically- Sorry, I connected a couple of minutes late, but I'm here. No worries, that's fine. Um, that's great. I've just introduced you, so uh, so uh, that's great. That's wonderful. And uh, Jessica will be able to just pipe up anytime I, I would for, I, I forget anything or anything that actually is uh, my approach is not the right one, or we should really really consider um, uh, different approaches because she's the person who is really closest to the the cohort of of, of colleagues who are we were trying to trying to mentor and and uh, and and help. So. The first, more or less the first three uh, parts, sections, the overview of a program, what you're being asked to do and the code of conduct. Um, I will be talking, I will be talking a lot. Uh, this comes from a lot of it is sort of my previous experience, my wisdom, whatnot. And then in the last um, part, hopefully we will we'll, we'll have enough time for that is, uh, will come from you. So I will basically be just asking you to, um, you know, share with us any best practices or tips and tricks from you, from your experience. You all have plenty of experience mentoring people in a, in a variety of capacities. So um, I'm sure that you have, you will have some ideas. Um, right. So uh, the overview of the program. So basically we are um, uh, looking at, you know, these sort of, I put it in questions and answers. And so how, who is conducting this program? This is really, it, it, it sounds, it's a fancy sounding program, but there's basically nobody behind it, but myself and Jessica and yourselves. So we are conducting it. There's no equipment, there's no budget. Uh, there's very little budget for the, for the scholars of, um, for the um, Emerging Scholars Forum. Um, that might have a one-off budgets of, of uh, at Congresses, but otherwise, this is basically it. Um, we are conducting it, um, right? And uh, you already know the two of us coordinators. Um, uh, we we do have uh, seem to have at least in my judgment uh, uh, too few mentors from the from the Rias edit editorial leadership. So if you know, uh, if any of you know. Uh, personally, um, Justin Batten, uh, um, Jennifer Schnapp, uh, Nathaniel Racine, I know Pavel is, is right now pretty busy, and um, so I, I don't want to settle him uh, with, with this. But if you can encourage them to please sign up to be mentors, if they don't come to be mentors, what we will, well, what I will end up doing is I will, I will suggest that you suggest to your mentees to have a one group session where they try to uh, to interview uh, one of these folks. So at least that's the next best thing to, to actual shadowing and, and mentoring. 
how long does this program last? The um, uh, all of our um, um, all of our um, fellows uh, committed to or can commit to a twelve months period. You can make this more piecemeal so maybe you know plan for half for uh for uh, half of it first uh and then the half of it next um so a six month six months what whatever kind of plan you want to have as the um uh what who this program is for is basically both for us officers at, at uh, isa and rias and uh and for our early career um, uh, scholar co colleagues, um, uh, they are the ISI Emerging Scholar Fellows. Uh, in our application form, um, I, I defined or I tried to get at early career less about how many years have you been out with a PhD already than what stage uh, of tra transitioning into academia or entering into into, into an academic job on, on the academic jobs market and especially uh, with the sort of the end goal of achieving a, a permanent uh, full-time academic job um that's sort of the the what uh what determines it we only have two people who already are uh in permanent academic jobs out of the 15 um fellows what are the goals of this program um so the, it's basically trying to face to both ways which is difficult enough um on the one hand it's trying to help our early career fellows with skills training and, and experience, uh, including some version of, of kind of shadowing of, a, of an IS or RIAS uh, officer mentor. These skills and experience uh, ideally will help our fellows move into an advance in academia as a career, because most of them are really focused on that, um, especially to secure a permanent academic jobs. On the other facing end of this, or the other facing um, the uh, part of this, the, the program is supposed to help IASA and RIAS uh, by, in effect, both uh, acquainting our fellows with with what we do and our um, our structures, uh, and also training uh, our, our junior colleagues uh, who can then choose to, if they choose to, they can run for office in IASA and RIAS and succeed you in uh, in some of your own positions there. Again, this is not a given. It will largely depend on including how well we mentor them and what they, how they feel, how, how welcome they feel, and how sort of do they feel that there's enough um, direction, or uh, or do they have a sense of direction that they want to go into? Um, it is a light touch mentoring program, which is again, it's kind of, um, but what does that really mean? Um, uh, we. I in my book, this means that we try to um, both the mentees and the mentors respect each other's uh, finite time and energy to engage. So in practice, the mentors should be sort of willing to personally, you know, primarily um, first remotely and then as as the means permit um, once or twice on site. Uh, so um, inside on in person, engage with their mentees. Um, I recommend in a group at, at most in pairs because I know that we just don't have that the energy for um, all one on one meetings all the time. It's also not not fully advisable. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but just as importantly, mentors should uh, should should be able to design some professional activities for the mentees to be doing in between meetings. So we're trying to sort of keep this in in uh, uh, in motion, um, not through necessarily always, you know, very, very frequently meeting, but um, but the, the with these tasks and exercises in between that mentees can use to, to challenge themselves uh, and they should be challenging themselves as well um, to explore problems, um, the, the issues that they encounter uh, in their mentors' positions and then and, and to, to explore, uh, explore problems and solutions. And mentors should be getting some responses from their mentees. So ideally this there should be some kind of a feedback loop um, obviously, what you get is what you get. Uh, don't try to go chasing people. Um, you know, what you get is what you get. You work with that. Um, and hopefully then mentors should then think about how to use these this feedback, this kind of um, sort of responses to the to the to the exercises uh, in their next meeting with the mentees, because this is what makes it like trains um, um, skills building. So actually effective pedagogically. 
Um, is this a mentoring program or an internship? It is not an internship. It has no structure, no, no well-developed structure. It has no infrastructure behind it. There's no routine behind it. And it doesn't have that kind of frequency. An internship is weekly at least, but possibly, you know, a one whole half of a week at least. So it's it's just, it doesn't have that. Um, it's also not for teaching entry level skills at all. No secretarial skills, so we're not really not talking about that. It's not it's not coffee and donuts as as, as some Americans would 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 think that would uh, call those kinds of internships. It it should be building you know more of the mid and higher level academic and associational leadership skills. Um, it's primarily a mentoring program, but it it should where I recommend it should happen in 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 groups, unlike traditional mentoring. So it's a little bit tricky in that way, but uh, but I think that we can make it work. Um, you are all getting from me, and you have just gotten, I think, uh, some of the, the, the Word documents, information about the fellows who, who can uh, choose to become your mentee. So this is basically a group I hope it will settle down uh, over time and some of it for some of you, it might be okay, 10, is it over? Um, that sounds like a lot, but it hopefully it will be, it will be, it will uh, sort of settle down a little bit less. Um, you should be communicating with all of them about your first group meeting um, of mentor and mentees. This, you can start doing this, you know, next week, uh, especially after the, the general orientation. Um, on Friday that you that I'm, we're asking you to to attend that, um, and I can tell you about that later. Um, you will want to keep all of uh, all of these uh, mentees uh, in their email just their email address. You want to keep uh, for your for later communications, even if they end up drifting away to other mentors. That's totally fine. I think it's it's uh, still fine to be um, sh to be sending forwarding information their way. So not sort of that, that's just for their their options um you should not feel frustrated that if over time some of your mentees drift to other mentors okay this is just it's absolutely natural and i encourage people to do that um i also encourage people will be encouraging um next next friday encouraging our mentees to try to still challenge themselves and try to see if you know if somebody's personal mentoring style is very different from what they what they you know really like to try to think about okay well how would I work with this person still in in that way in this in this capacity um because they should be challenging themselves but ultimately they will be figuring figuring it out over the next couple of months what they're really interested in and who they really can relate to as a mentor so they will be drifting um, and that's totally fine. And hopefully that's, you know, it will be a little bit more, uh, those groups will be more, a little bit more manageable. So um, the, uh, what the structure of the program will look like, and this is kind of, uh, I have a, a number of, number of sort of iterations of this. So next Friday, you know, the next Friday we will have a general orientation meeting. Um, if uh, you haven't received um, information yet, shoot me an email. I will uh, I will uh, um, give that to you. UK time uh, next Friday will be 4 to 5.30. I think if, um, Jessica, if you can check on this just to make sure that um, if, I mean, if you are, if you happen to have it at hand, if not, then don't worry, it's fine. Um, so I think that's, that's uh, 4 to 5.30 UK time next Friday, uh, May the 12th. Um, afterwards, each of your ment each of the you mentors will be able to set up your own first or a lot of folks um, remote meeting with your group of mentees, and, and in, in that meeting, uh, hopefully you will be cooperatively like they generate some ideas uh, for the content and the the form of your further meetings. Um, so I recommend that the following structure. This is the one through five kind of thing that you see on the screen. Um, uh, attending um, our online, this is zero, just zero. It's attending our online uh, general orientation, actually, uh, number one, um, for the ISA officers and the fellows. The second one is going to be your, your important meeting where you, you basically, um, uh, you will be more or less describing your own position, a little bit more detail uh, to the fellows, right? And right. then 
hopefully generate some ideas of like what they are, what they were most interested in. And, uh, you know, you can sort of um, start thinking about that um, of what what sessions, what form and what focus uh, you want to put uh, in with them over the following for the, the 12 months. Uh, you should be doing several meetings now. Obviously, the ideal is if you have one each month, but, you know, it's it's really, for example, for the summer holidays, well, you know, it's it's up to you and it's up to it's up to them. Um, the structure for the uh, so some structure uh, with these meetings with for the fellows to um, um, to be learning from the mentor about their duties and their and, and their their skills in their ISA positions or their lack thereof, and I'll, I'll tell you about this as well. So it's uh, um, including some exercises. So you should be thinking about. Okay, well, if this is the topic that they're mostly interested in, or they're interested in the uh, top three topics, for a session on this topic, what kind of exercise, pre-exercise would I ask them to do, and how would I then be using that tool for discussion uh, in that in that session? So it's kind of like a, you know, set up a little bit of a pedagogical feedback loop in the, in that in that sense, um, right? Uh, and hopefully then that that will help them to truly engage with the uh, the issues in your positions. Um, and I think I'm down now at number four. Um, no, actually I am I have uh, mixed this up in myself, but that's fine. Um, there should be one actually, this is this is number four. There should be one of these um, uh, sessions should be a little bit more self-reflexive. Um, yeah, this could be a health time session uh, where, where you basically ask them something like, okay, well, you think about it and write a couple of paragraphs about what you have learned so far, what you have been, you know, frustrated with so far, you know, what, you know, what skills can you identify that you have started to acquire that you would like to acquire more and so on and so on. So think about, so, so get them, get them to think about what's, uh, what the, the process itself, it's a, it's a little bit of at the meta level, um, and then finally, um, it, hopefully, what I'm 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 hoping uh, you will be able to do is uh, that all of you will be able to to go to the the ISA World Congress or um, uh, and and then actually meet your mentees there as many as you possibly can. So you will want to be, um, and this is why I think this is something important. Um, of how this relates, how this program relates to the, the World Congress in Katowice, Poland in, in September. Um, it is up to you and, and your mentees to, um, uh, about um, how you will want to use the Congress for your purposes of mentoring. Um, I would encourage you to do that, to basically be thinking about, okay, you got to, you want to, you want to be able to use it. Um, this should be a priority, or I recommend it as a priority because it is an, a really important opportunity for you to meet several of your mentees uh, in person and help them gain crucial skills for their career. Um, so, the abstract submission deadline at the at the at this point is May the thirtieth. Um, uh, so you want you at this point you have uh, less than one month to sort of keep thinking about. Are you going to, uh, you know, you can submit your own um, uh, paper. That's totally fine. And we're really looking forward to it. Um, or you want to put, put something on with your mentees. Would would that be, or you, do you want to basically just do it under the radar and and uh, take some time off the of the Congress and and uh, you know have a two hour you know or one hour session or over coffee uh, in the afternoon um, in one of the afternoons. Mm -hmm. So it's totally fine. I know that um, uh, Dr. Sires is planning something for the for the uh, emerging scholars and emerging scholars forum that is not um, confined to just the fellows. So it's not just your mentees who are going to be go, go, going there, but I know that uh, that their prim primary um, uh, interest was to actually be able to debate the big issues in American studies, the big issues, including stuff like, you know, why I assume that for, from my, you know, 20 years ago perspective is, you know, why do why does the Scottish Association for the Study of America calls itself America, right? What is that? What does that mean? So it's one of those perennial issues, you know, uh, exceptionalism, transnationalism, all that stuff. Um, 
Um, so um, that will be probably, that will be on the program. Um, and I know that Jessica will be working on that. But apart from that, that's not going to be your mentoring session. You will have to, you will want to use your, um, try to create your own mentoring session. So uh, any questions about the overview of the program? And I will stop sharing so I can actually look you in the eyes. Because if not, then I'll just race on. Yes. yes. I have a question about uh, the last point uh, mm -hmm. the conference. Uh, what do you mean uh, organizing uh, instead of uh, submitting uh, a proposal, doing uh, uh, sending a proposal about a session, or it's something that we will organize together? I think it's it's totally up to you. So I think that what gets people to the to the Congress is if they all send in their own paper abstracts, and that and that doesn't have to be in a in a in a single panel for all your ment mentees and whatever. So everybody should be sending in. That's the first thing. We should basically be treating our mentees as, and I know that I will see you at the Congress, right? Yes, Remember, you know, yes, no, I will, I will, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't have to. There's nothing, there's no onus okay. on you to be doing anything in the program. You yes. can basically just make sure that you know you're thinking of yes. this. Okay, and we will meet at the con yes. the, uh, the congress and try to take you know set set aside maybe an hour for yourself to just meet with your mentees because I think there's um, especially in the light of the two years that much of the, much of two years uh, fell out of uh, their training um, because of the pandemic. So we are talking about folks who like us, but they are early career folks. So in the early career stage, in-person trust building and networking is incredibly important, right? I could run on empty for two more years because I knew the people who I was collaborating with. But these folks are... You know they really still need to be be building that that network, and so you are part of that network, and you are sort of advising session or or mentoring session, or just you know getting up, getting getting a good coffee together in a group uh, is very very much part of that. It's possible that at that point someone will talk, someone someone will say something about their research, and you know in the other side of your brain it's like. Uh, I know this. I know another person. Why don't I grab that person and try to and, and connect you? This is sort of what we're asking asking you to do. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can rush on. Um, let me see if I manage to share my screen. Okay. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know if you want this. Is the, I uh, basically I would be saying the same thing as I've written to you already. The general uh, characterization of what's uh, what are the what's the breakdown of our uh, in terms of numbers of our of our fellows. I can go through that again, or I can just jump to uh, what are you being asked to do. If you already know those numbers, then you know it should be fine. I mean, you know that we have fifteen fellowship applicants. Uh, at my recommendation, we accepted all of them. Uh, they are primarily from Europe, but they they are they they are from a smattering of countries. Some of them um, were trained in one country. They are originally from another country, or the other way around. Um, uh, UK, Finland. The folks, some folks were trained in the United States. Some of some of them are are or from the Netherlands, Italy, or Spain, or Poland. Ukraine or Kyrgyzstan, Tunisia and or Hungary and India. So this is kind of how it how it works out geographically. There are women to men two to one. That's I think pretty much uh, sort of a uh, something that that sounds like arts and humanities. Um, over half of them are PhDs already, so they do have do have a need and they have they have worked and sacrificed for it. Just two of them are in permanent academic positions and most of them are actively looking for jobs in academia. So what you're being asked to do as a mentor, um, you two, you are asked, being asked to mentor a group of ISI Emerging Scholar Fellows. 
um, will be your mentees. You're you're being asked to after this session to look over your list of mentees. This is in your word document in the group, um, and of course, there's a you know breakdown of individuals with their uh, interests and, and so on and so on. Um, devise with some with as much input as you can from them, uh, from the mentees, kind of a program of mentoring for the next 12 months. Again, you can do this as, well, let's let me sort of pin down something for the next six months. And then, and then after that, we can we can do another one for the next six months. So if it's 12 month plan, six month plan, the format, um, we recognize that a lot of folks because of where they live, because of lack of means, uh, limited means, uh, their primary way to connect uh, for the program will be through remote technology. So I'm, I, I'm asking you if your uh, universities already have their own, pre, you know, pre-purchased or subscribed remote technology, Microsoft Teams or Zoom that allows you to invite sort of these you know, people as guests uh, for such mentoring sessions. Do use those. OK, so let's milk our universities for this a little bit, please. You know, they, they are they are there. They're usually. Yeah. Anyways. Um, uh, and so I recommend that you primarily plan for live sessions instead of doing a talk, recording it, and then posting it online, because that's usually a very both passive and hierarchical, um, and it doesn't help folks, um, doesn't facilitate engagement with with the, with the topic um, as much. Um, uh, if it, ask and if your mentees agree, you can record a live session on, on uh, you know, remote technology and then send it to the few mentees who cannot be there. Um, uh, this this can be a supplementary measure. Um, our mentoring sessions should also be uh, reinforcing um, kind of live in person communication and work group skills or group work skills. Some of some of your mentees, our mentees, may need these badly. Again, they may have uh, lost those two years in a pandemic, where they all they could do is just, you know, remotely and asynchronously, you know, doing things, you know, online. Um, Wherever possible, I urge you to plan for some uh, on-site mentoring sessions, so actual in-person in-flash, um, where you meet your mentees them uh, there, and uh, as many as as uh, of them as possible, as many mentees you you want to meet. Even if you can do it, in, do um, um, in-person on-site just a few a uh, few times, uh, or just with just a few mentees, try to do it, and then make it hybrid for the rest of them or some ways um, so you can, you know, still try to get them to participate in some ways um, and uh, not just watch, but, uh, but, but try to uh, just speak up and contribute to, to the discussion, even if that's just remotely. Um, if you can at the Congress in September in Katowice, Poland, um, uh, please try to use that as, as a, a actual in-person meeting with your mentees. Uh, plan on spending some quality time with your mentees there. So I am not saying, I'm not officially telling you to ditch the program. Okay. <laughs> but plan on quali spending quality time with your mentees. Unstructured time can be actually in tremendously helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Not always in the immediate you know, um, few immediate um, here and now, but some, but sometimes in the future. So, also, what you do and how you do it models professional behavior, and certain ways of professional um, sort of uh, advancement. Um, it does make a great difference. You sometimes are fed back, and you are sometimes told, you know, professor, I actually remember how you did something like that, and I wanted to emulate that. Um, in a way, because it was it was affirming and nurturing and supportive. Um, also, remember that you are you should be open to being inspired by your mentees, right? As well as they build trust with you and and with each other, and also with each other. So they should be also, uh, hopefully, at least networking. Um, we can't expect them to gel. They are individuals and. Uh, academia in, in many countries is a very individualistic uh, profession. It's, it's surprisingly and sometimes heartbreakingly so. Um, so hopefully they will also give each other mutual support and collaboration. <clears throat> the approach that I, I advocate um, 
it should not be about mentor mentees asking oh sorry mentors asking the questions and uh or mentees asking the questions and so one side asking the questions and the other side giving the answers it's not like that it's not catechism or that kind of stuff um you don't want to be trying to dole out your wisdom um rather what you want is is sort of if even if even if you have some mentees who are trying to settle into that pattern and you know, because of their cultural and academic traditions, you'll want to think about it. Okay, well, well, you've you've noticed that. So how can you how can you do it in the next session in a way that sort of shifts the attention and uh, away from that and that kind of disrupts that hierarchy a little bit? Um, because otherwise, they, they will they will they they can't try to do that. And it's 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 a direction of least resistance to some folks. Um, do not try to paint an attractive picture of either ISO or RIAs. Don't. That's not what we're here to do. You are also not the all-knowing model of the association officer or journal editor. I know I am not the all all all-knowing model of uh, of our uh, um, uh, media uh, media officer at all. I'd say, as uh, I think uh, Gabby did um, have, a, we did have a good uh, email exchange. Be candid about your positions, frustrations, and omissions, and the potential for improvement. So try to get to get uh, get your um, mentees, your your fellows, um, or junior colleagues to be try to explore the issues with you and and sort of between and between each other as well. Um, so exploring issues together is 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 my is my approach or is my my recommended approach. Um, what are the issues that come up in your ISO or RIAS position? What are the challenges? And then what do your mentees think are the potential solutions? You can tell tell them, well, this is what you what we usually do, or actually, I don't know what we usually do because that's somebody else was was doing it or it was running that show. Um, but to be thinking about well, what could be what could be the solutions is it actually helpful for you to be able to say that you do not know the answer to a question um, because you immediately can turn it around and say so what do you think what do you think what are the what are the options for an officer to be doing to be responding to this and in what ways right uh, the recommended sessions I think we've gone through this uh, a little bit. So you know about next Friday, um, we will be um, uh, I will be doing running that show a little bit with a, a several of, um, a several other um, IS officers, and uh, who I will still try to try try to recruit just to make sure that uh, we have some diversity in there, and that I'm not the only person there. Um, uh, and then the first introductory uh, session with your mentees. After that, so the get a sense of the priority of their their uh, their topics, their interests. Brainstorm with them about how um, you can you all can address some of those issues in the coming sessions. So, for example, do you want to devote a whole session to what to every single issue? If there's just five, that's totally fine. That could 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 totally work. Or do you have? Or do you feel that you have basically one overarching issue, and then you know there's a number of uh, sub issues? Then you might want to try to you know cram those into a session. I think it's good taking it slower is probably smarter than trying to get through everything, because it's not. Uh, this is it's it's. <laughs> In some ways, it's a, it's slow mentoring. It's a slow program. But anyways, it's you'll you'll see how how it works. Um, if before your first session you can already um, create an activity or exercise or something like that, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that before your first session. Try to find readings for them. Also, readings is very is a little too studenty uh, and too teachery. Um, and these folks are junior colleagues, so they have to read for a living already so they will be reading their eyes out anyways so i'm so we want to be sort of um very smart about how um how we what we're what we're having them read if we want to have them have them read anything uh, but some kind of exercise or activity um before the for for them to complete before the meeting and then maybe report back on it if, if they want to um but remember that whenever you give something out like that 
you will want to follow up on that in the in the next meeting. So to actually be able to close that feedback loop and kind of reinforce, well, what have we learned anything? Have I, you know, do you have any advice for me as an IS officer based on what you what you've seen, what you've done, what you thought through, right? Um, you should plan on having a number of meeting, mentoring sessions before the, the, the World Congress in Poland, obviously. And one of these should be in a kind of an experimental kind of quote unquote shadowing session. So I know this is weird um, and it's more like a, a, an element in an internship, but I, I wonder if we could still try it. So the way I would I would be doing this uh, shadowing um, is more or less I would be sharing instead of this screen, I would be sharing the ISA um, Twitter account and the ISA um, Facebook uh, handle. And I would be uh, uh, sort of almost providing a little bit of an internal monologue for 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 my mentees of okay, well, when I'm doing this, when I've opened this, this is what I'm thinking about. I'm re I'm looking through you. Know, have we had any notifications and so on and so on? And then talking about um, not just the mechanics of what we, of what we do, but things like so. What do I like on Facebook or on Twitter? What do I reshare? How, you know what 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 is do I have a policy? Just because I would, I like something personally, does that mean that the institution does does that? So, how to think in terms of the institution's directions? Um, how to reverse it? I, I would even, for example, give it to them. It's like a two, one activity is uh, between between sessions is go look at the IS uh, Twitter account and try to reverse engineer what policy I follow in what I share, what I post, what I retweet. And so that kind of stuff. So, um, but also in the shadowing is they're basically seeing what I'm seeing, and I'm I'm commenting or commentating on what I think, what I do, what my choices are, what my dilemma is, and try to sort of help them in that way. So they're almost in my head, um, in that sense. That's just one approach, and it could be totally crazy and uh, whatever. Um, but we ultimately, if we find some issues challenges that we could then basically come back to like all all sort of discussion whatever and then discuss it um we come back out of the shadowing mode you should be planning on having one mentoring session at the at the at the poland congress um and likely after the congress or potentially you know, i i would think probably after after the congress would be a really good time to have some kind of, you know, coming back in October, November, um, some kind of self-reflective session where you you can also self-reflect with them as well or to them. And they can self-reflect to you about what they, you know, where they think they are in the, in this process, in this mentoring process, you know, what they what they uh, what they have been acquiring, what they have, you know, realized is new things. Um, and so on and so on. Now, <clears throat> right. Any questions about what you are being asked to do as a mentor before we go on to the code of conduct, which sounds really, really seriously and severe, but not really is. Any questions about what you are being asked to do as a mentor? Yes, Gabby. I see that on my list, people want everything from how to write a paper, to how to publish a paper. Uh, isn't this something they're doing with their teachers, you know, at their universities? I find I, that uh, <laughs> strange. Hello, mm -hmm. everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, to I totally understand that. Um, I think basically the my, my approach to that was to basic to uh, to make sure that everyone has plenty of mentees and every every mentee has plenty of uh, choices for a mentor, um, so it looks absolute chaos right now. It's also true, I think uh, you're absolutely right, that, Gabby. That that you know why would, would wouldn't we expect that they their advisors would have been would have been advising them about these things? So and some of them would have, and some of them would have not. And also, I think it's there's also an issue of just people. When I was, um, I before I kind of I don't know broke into to publishing, um, I had no idea of like well I submitted something to a to a journal, but I don't know what like what happens to it. 
I don't know how to tailor something to a to a journal to a journal's focus to tailor tailor my article to a journal's focus. Like, how much do I need to twist it around, and how much do I need to sort of, you know, re rethink it like for the whole approach? Um, so I think that it's it's perfectly valid that that folks are interested in a in a host of issues, and I think that we are very much our program is very much a process by which they will eventually sort of narrow down into maybe three things that they think they will really, really delve deep into. And, and probably that will be even after our program ends of, you know, somebody's going gonna go into scholarly publishing. We do have a, a number, a high number of interest, very serious interest in editorial work. So that's one thing that if you're if you're willing to do that, or if if we if anybody can uh, can try to gently nudge and encourage our other um, Rias editors, um, uh, uh, was it ba uh, Dr. Batten, Dr. Schnapp, and uh, Dr. Reichenbergersen, um, to to sort of come on board and and try and uh, do some mentoring, that would be great because the issue right now is as far as I can see it from my historical perspective, right, of, of Rios, is that now there's interest and there are, there are people who are really interested in starting to engage and learn that kind of editorial work. We need people who then now are taking them on and are not being crushed by that workload, by that uh, sort of mentoring stuff, because then we could really have good, some a couple of good matches. And all we need is a few good matches, right? of people who are really get with it and really and really want to engage. We do have a, quite a number of people who are seriously, seriously interested in publishing. I think it's it's obvious that they realize that the, the RIAS is great, would be a great tool for their professional advancement as well. Any other questions? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, from my perspective, I understand this program as a kind of preparation for those students or colleagues to eventually you know play a role in IASA am I correct right it so is one it is one I of the functions have, right I personally only have very limited experience with IASA and I feel that I can contribute very little in terms of you know the role I played here uh, so I was just wondering whether there will be more kind of experienced long-standing IASA members who would perhaps contribute um, to this mentoring program as well. And um, I'm also wondering, uh, apart from what I have just mentioned, uh, I think Gabriel did mention that maybe those PhD students were more interested in you know, publishing their own papers, right? Um, are there any concerns um, you know, in terms of job seeking, for example? I know, for example, in my university, we offer we are offering job opportunities to you know PhD students with overseas education background to come and to teach in my uh, department so uh, should these information also be helpful to to them yes absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. whatever you see as relevant information but re always remember that they have a variety of stages. So some of them are early, early, uh, early years PhDs. So basically, just the first first three years of their PhD programs. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are in imminent. They are they're getting their their PhDs imminently. So that's you know last you know couple of months. Some of them are are out with a PhD for for a few years uh, and are are, uh, um, are are looking for jobs. So. Think of the variety of of, um, of uh, phases, but you can also just send something over to say and and say for those of you who are who this is for too early yet, just mm -hmm. put this on your calendar and try mm -hmm. to put try to feed you know feed it into your calendar because you know any uh, any good person should have a calendar of these are the opportunities then and, and when I get closer to it I should be applying to these things. So mm -hmm. in in that way that's um, that's good. The other thing that I wanted to I wanted to say is uh, just because you haven't done that much in IASA, it doesn't mean that you don't have relevant experience. In fact, stu uh, the, the, our, our our mentees and our fellows would probably be very very interested in your uh, all kinds of other experience that you have. 
So absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. And we'll we'll follow up. Absolutely. So otherwise I can talk talk about oh, code of sorry, yep. George, yes. I have a question. Apologies, everyone. I'm in my pajamas because it's two in the morning here. I'm sorry, um, and thank you so and, much uh, for attending. I'm in New Zealand. Um, so two, I, I thank you for that. Um, I, that last question was exactly one of mine. So I'm an officer in our Australasian uh, American Studies Association. So I, I could talk about that, but obviously I'm, I, I'm not doing IASA um, leadership at all. So, and a number of the people you sent me are interested in conference organizing. So it seems like it'd be better to quickly get them on to helping with the uh congress so um so yeah so just wanted to put that on also i am not going to be able to get to the congress so uh is that a issue um i don't think know. it's i don't think it's an issue i think if you are your mentees know that that's still still totally yeah. fine um yeah. i think that if i was one of uh if i was one of the mentees um and i will impress upon them to keep an open mind i would be really, really interested to learn about the you know, Australian New Zealand uh, American Studies Association, how yeah. things are done there, what the, you know, st the structures that are yeah. there and so on and so on. So, so it's, yeah. um, I think it's, it, it would really, really enrich them. And what was the, the other, the other thing you, you were saying? Um, oh, no, no, just, just about the, um, not being able to get to Poland. <laughs> sure. Well, that's, that, that's, that's, yeah. that's how it works. No, no problem. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think they would still be very, very lucky to have, uh, to have you. Oh, okay, man. so and then last but last but not least, how many mentors are there and how have you decided to distribute them? Because I you you just sent me a list of seven and I mean, I'm yeah. I'm just really concerned that I'm not going to be able to look after all of them. Um this is not it's not gonna be a one-on-one -on -one mentoring um as we know it from our yeah. traditions. It's this is gonna be sort of group um uh folks you know, you meeting them in groups um at most, you know, with a in, in a with a in, with a pair. Um, basically what I did, I didn't do that much weeding and that much selection. I basically put everybody into groups trying to match with an, everybody's any interest. So, so what do I, some, what I'm saying, are what some I, mentees doubling up? Like, do they have several yes, mentees? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, so what, so okay. what's, what's currently, what's currently visible to you is an absolute chaos with you having too many mentees and the, the, what the, what's currently going to be visible to mentees is is a, is chaos of like you could have any of six mentors oh, uh, what see. are you going to do um and i will basically just bank on um telling them you need to sort of taste get you know get get the first session with with uh with a number of mentors and see you know um who is going to be zooming in on on your your interest and who, who you feel compatible with, but also try to sort of challenge yourself of you, try to stick with somebody who you might not feel com compa uh, fully compatible with. So they, so I, I'm banking on them drifting a little bit. And so yeah. to for, for folks uh, numbers to become more manageable over time. But again, there's just no way that you can manage six, 10, 12, um, you know, mentees in that way. So you'll want to be, you know, planning on this in the way, in the best way that you know how, and not do not settle yourself with a with a crushing workload about this. So rather, I guess I'm just concerned, George, about how, how do we turn them over to other people? How are we going to work that out? And I don't want any hurt feelings. We're, or we're not. Like no, 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 no. So that's what that's <laughs> precisely what I would be, be saying. Uh, and I, I did say that I think several times already that you should consider it very natural that they will drift and then they will sort of like, you know, in don't consider it like they don't they won't ghost you. If 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 it feels like ghosting, one don't. Oh, I'm not worried about my feelings. I'm worried about <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Ultimately, and it's not your it's not your work to try to t turn them over to anybody. What you can do is you can suggest that actually it sounds like your interests might you know work better yeah. with that person. But you know, don't try to you know put, you know push them over or whatever. We need to basically trust that they will be 
they will be drifting as they are in the process of figuring out, okay, well, this looks like this looks like a good person, an interesting person. They are they have an interesting perspective. They seem to be focusing on some of the stuff that I'm I'm interested in. So so they um there should be plenty of opportunities for them to stick if they just stick with a few people, then there will be there will be more than enough for them. Um so again, um it's possible that I haven't thought this this through well, and I I will be the first to admit if this doesn't doesn't work, then obviously we'll we'll need to figure figure something out. I've been could, trying could to get we... more I've been trying to get more people to to mentor, but there's only so much that you can do. So if I'm not getting you know even responses to my emails from some of the Rias editorship, then Pavel I, I assume is on vacation. He's he's on is he's on research leave, so I'm I'm trying not to bother him. But if somebody doesn't even respond to me, then that's 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 all I can do. So, so you know, how many mentors sure. do we have? I think I think at this point we have about six. I think it's six. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think it's six. Okay. So yeah, and some of them are are from leadership, and some of them are have immense experience. You know, I'm looking at Giorgio uh, has immense experience, but at the same time, we want to be easy on you know, on everybody. So um, to sort of and be candid. There are certain issues that we will not know about, or we will not know, or or something that that is in my my job description yet I have never done because there's somebody else who does it, or we just haven't really had the resources to really and the attention and energy to really pursue that. Yes, uh, Giorgio. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I just wanted to uh, reassure Jennifer. I I have like fifteen people on my list, and uh, <laughs> obviously I. Uh, I, I, I don't expect all of them to stick with me. Um, also because I have taken a quick look at their profiles and uh, there are certain things they're interested in, uh, uh, which uh, obviously uh, I, uh, I have very little uh, uh, to say about. I mean, I, I, I don't think there are certain areas uh, um, that they're interested in that would, uh, uh, you know, um, overlap with any of my, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, experience. I, I do have a vast experience uh, simply because I'm old and also because I've been for a long time with, uh, with the ISA. I've been the president for uh, uh, two rounds. I was vice president when when Jane Desmond was president. So I've had, you know, many years in a position of so-called leadership. So I, there's a lot I can say about the way IASA works and also a lot of, I can say about how it doesn't work. And, um, and so from that point of view, I, I think I, you know, I, I can certainly provide, uh, uh, you know, information or, you know, set up in, you know, useful conversations, uh, even though, as uh, uh, Georgi was saying earlier on, I, I don't really want this to become, of course, uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, me sort of telling the story, you know, the, the old folk was telling the story of how this organization was started and what happened happened and uh, you know all the you know all, 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 all the juicy you know gossip about you know why at some point some people left and why there was a rift between this and that okay so obviously that's not what people are interested in i think that what people are interested in are other things but at the same time they would also need to have some kind of you know, an understanding of some of the, uh, I think, unique features of this organization, because, uh, you know, uh, I I am a member of, of other academic uh, uh, associations, and that, you know, the IASA is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a completely different story. Um, uh, for a variety of reasons, which I'm not going to address now, of course. But uh, so, you know, obviously that is one of the areas in which I can provide some kind of uh, uh, background and expertise uh, um, organize, organizing, uh, you know, uh, Congress Congresses, events, and things like that, and I agree that with Jennifer that you know, of course, if there are people who are interested in doing that kind of work, it would be a great idea to you know get them to work right right now, <laughs> you know, when we need them most. 
and uh, and I also very much agree with uh, with uh, what Yogi said earlier on about um, the need, uh, and this is something that I will try to address in the coming weeks with the uh, you know current uh, uh, um, you know editorship of uh, yeah, Rias. Uh, we we have to get uh, the uh, Rias editors involved in this because a lot of people are interested in publishing not only as in uh, you know how do i do uh, how do i get my my stuff published but how do i you know contribute to a journal in terms of running a journal in terms of being part of that organization in terms of you know making uh, uh, learning things while I, I i do that but at the same time also having certain skills that are required nowadays to uh, uh you know be part of a uh, an editorial board and uh, at, at this point uh, you know i another thing i've done is i've been for many years mm, uh, until you know, basically a few months ago, I was uh, the editor in chief of Rias, but you know, I the, the, the I no longer the editor in chief, and uh, one of the reasons is also that I'm retiring soon, and so I'm um, sort of looking forward to uh, you know taking a break from a lot of this. Um, but uh, um, I, I I do know that uh, um, I mean I, I I do have a certain experience that I have you know, uh, 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 sort of mature through over the years. And uh, so I, I can certainly help people getting an, an idea of what it means, again, uh, being part of a journal that is in some ways like other academic journals, and in some ways it is not. And that partly has to do with the fact that it is the, so the, the journal of the ISA, which, as I said earlier on, is to some extent a different kind of academic association. So I, I think that that's one of the things that I would be able to, to, to contribute. And whereas there are other areas where I'm completely inept, uh, even though I I have, uh, you know, I've been in academia for, you know, uh, for, 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 for four years now. Um, like, uh, for example, uh, you know, fundraising is just something I'm, I'm not, good at you know I'm, I'm I wasn't good at it when I was a boy scout and I didn't you know I I, I didn't become better over the years when I became an academic I, I've just been uh, always uh, that, that, that that's certainly a, you know a weak point of mine and uh, I you know I, I I tried to do a little bit when uh, I was president and uh, you know it, it didn't really you know it, it didn't really fly anyway so um there are certainly people who are much more experienced and so if, i i noticed that some people are interested in that and, uh, and 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 i hope that those people would sort of naturally sort of migrate towards uh, another mentor who has more experience and uh, better advice to give on uh, on that score because for me they're not going to learn anything about fundraising zero so uh you know that's sort of you know the way i think of my first meeting with all these people is this is what i can do for you this is uh you know that this is who i am and this is uh, what i think i can uh, uh, help you with and then uh, here's what i definitely cannot help you with and hopefully that would uh, you know uh, um, sort of set in motion that process that Georgi mentioned of you know people kind of going where they think they they can learn the most uh, it, you know provided that of course you know everyone is welcome but you know obviously if you want to have a kind of a working relationship which you know uh, 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 where certain skills are acquired and, and 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 real communication takes place obviously you can't really do that with too many people, unless you're, that's the only thing you're doing. And, and as we know, yes. not unfortunately the only thing we're doing, we're doing this on top of many other things. Yes, so, and I, I think I think our fellows will will absolutely understand that, and I think they will they will adjust to that. So um, they will be just happy to be able to, you know, pick somebody's brain like like yours. Um, so absolutely, I think that's fine. Do you want me to run through the code of conduct real quick, or or should should I basically if I 
um, you know, because I would, I would otherwise, I would only just mention one thing, and that would be um, different, uh, different academic and cultural traditions. Um, so it basically, you know, how 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 to behave if they, is there a code of conduct? Well, um, yes and no. Um, the I, ISL uh, doesn't necessarily have any mechanisms uh, for for these things. Doesn't have a prescribed other than be professional at all times. And I would say that uh, we need to account for, or we need to to be prepared to uh, give the benefit of the doubt to each other about the different academic traditions that we're coming from. And some of these are culturally in, in influenced. So while some of us might might have been trained in like a postmodern US, you know, um, influenced scholarship, um, others are coming from places where um, our training structures were still very hierarchical um, and, and, and very much um, expected to basically be, you know, in terms of information and then information, you know, some of it is um, could 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 have been a part of rote memorization and examination and that kind of stuff. So, I would say that in general, and some of us some of us will also come from um, have been to places where we where people are hyper aware of um, of of diversity and really and great value in diversity and and uh, and inclusion. Whereas some some have to work in places or are c coming from places where. Well, diversity is still relatively new, and it's the it, you know you have to every day kind of make the case of why it's valuable, right? The why is it important for you know to make to make a uh, way for for folks who are more diverse than the usual middle class, middle aged men in academia who developed the whole of academia and Western academia and Wells ways of knowing. So um, we we'll want to to be when. When we sense, when it, any of you sense a an issue, frustration, a challenge, a problem with any of your uh, any of your mentees, or when they with you, give the benefit of the doubt to the person and try to and uh, start with assuming that it's possibly a, an intercultural miscommunication could be. Or it's something is informed by the variety of you know cultures and academic traditions that people come from, because then we can discuss those things as opposed to each other's personalities, right? So um, that's kind of what I would what I would say. Of course, there's plenty more to be saying. I I will send you uh, over the the uh, my uh, little script about planning sessions, formalities, approaches to networking, um, gender, personal distance, um, and then the the, um, the imposter syndrome, which is something that I, I assume that uh, that uh, some of our mentees will will be uh, will be grappling with, will still be working through um, of how to um, uh, how we could how we could uh, approach those. But I really I, I'm interested in your own uh, ideas about best practices or uh, tips and tricks. Um, I also am interested in if, if Jessica, if there's anything that, you know, popped up in your head about something hasn't been covered, or if there's anything that you feel might be a good advice, piece of advice for us from folks who are, you know, you, you're closest, closest to them, uh, I think of all of us and, and, uh, are sort of more attuned to their, their needs and their, their struggles. Um, I think you've covered almost all the points there. I think you did a really great job. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I would just say on Gabby's point, I think it was Gabby that raised it earlier about um, assuming that maybe some of these things would have been taught by PhD supervisors in the past. Um, I would just say, don't assume that. <laughs> my experience from my own experience and the experience of my friends and colleagues at Edinburgh um, is that that varies drastically even within a single institution and within a single department. So. Um, I would say don't assume that um, students have been taught things like how to get published or how to write an article. Um, quite often, many of us don't get that kind of mentoring and these opportunities are incredible. It's, yeah, I mean, certainly you can't fill in for um, gaps that people have experienced in their own um, past, but if you have the opportunity to offer advice on how RIAS publishes or how ISA works with these things, that can be really helpful and it can make a huge difference to some of the mentees who maybe haven't had that before. And even for those who have, um, 
getting it from a different context or understanding how it works in a different country or a different uh, publication, um, that's really helpful as well. Several. That'd be my only addition. Thank you. Se several of our national associations uh, in and related to American studies are really, really focused on trying to give additional training and workshops to to uh, to postgraduate students and, and early career folks. So that's why I'm not asking any of you to say, can you please put on a workshop on, you know, scholarly publishing or, you know, on the job search? Because those things are actually there's even now now even remotely there's remote opportunities for 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 uh, for early career folks to be tuning into those, so I suspect that they're actually probably getting a whole lot of opportunities, but those tend to be structured, and they tend to be sort of put on by the British Association for American Studies on you know scholarly publishing, um, how to turn your PhD into a into a book that kind of stuff. So they're they they hopefully they're getting those. What, they, what they're not getting is a little bit more of like sort of, okay, well, this is my thought process. This is what I do in my position. Um, and and they're definitely not, I, I don't think that they're getting insights into the functioning of a, um, an international um, uh, scholarly association necessarily. Uh, and if they do that, then there will be from one single person ever or very few. Any best practices or, or or tricks and tips that you you bring you took away from some of your own mentoring experiences? And this is for everybody. I might I might uh, ask Jessica to mentor some folks, but um, um, you know, but not not in that sense. I my my experience in general is that you basically can make offers, but don't push. The other person will basically figure out if they're interested in you know doing that or not, and they will they will be set. To, they need to be setting their own terms of how much you want to engage with your knowledge, with your with your mind, with your skill sets, and. Some some things they will totally engage with and they will be like going and diving into it and absolutely doing it. And others, other things will just no, no, not this time. Um, they also quite probably a lot of them are quite overworked anyways. So they will need to be making some hard decisions. Yeah, you know, I I I think what's important is that, you know, from an early stage, we understand also what are the expectations of you know our mentees. Um, what uh, what do they expect from uh, you know this experience in general, uh, and and of course from you know the the, the the mentor that they choose to work most closely with, also in particular. But in general, what, what how they see this as contributing to their uh, formation as a you know young scholar and uh, um, no, because that way I think we can sort of set the uh, you know the the, 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 the the way we also you know think of you know the activities for example that we want to carry out with them the kind of uh, you know things that we uh, we want to you know bring you know, to to the discuss with them and, and and the kind of exercises as as you said that we might want to to assign to uh, the mentees if, if we have a clear understanding from the very beginning of what is expected I think it's uh, you know it it, 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 it it and of course vice versa what we can as I said earlier on what we can offer them I I think uh, you know we we can uh, you know, have a clear understanding from, you know, an early stage of uh, uh, how this can be beneficial to both, because, you know, obviously I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing this uh, with, with the idea that, you know, I, as Georgie said, I, you know, even, even though I'm, I'm basically done with my career, but, you know, I, I, I still want to be inspired by 
by younger people, even uh, even at such a late stage, and uh, uh, um, and 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 because you know, of course, I'm I'm interested in you know understanding also how you know the the the, 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 the there's a real you know in in my case especially a real generational gap because you know. I'm I'm looking forward to my pension essentially, so I'll be out of academia in in a year, and uh, there isn't really much that I have to look forward to in that sense or in that area. But uh, at the same time, I am interested in you know what people who are entering academia now expect from uh, not 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 only from from me or from us or from the IASA, but just from their experience in general at a time when we know that the work we do or we have been doing is uh, you know not as you know uh, fashionable or as uh, you know easily accepted or taken for granted as it may have been you know way back when uh, some of us uh, you know started um, with uh, you know with this profession. So the um, one thing I've been I've been thinking about this. So instead of me forwarding to you all mentors, the materials, the 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 application form and the um, cover letter from your mentees, what I would rather say is to be able to sort of be more careful in, in, in handling that information is if you contact your mentees and say, you have the choice. It would help me greatly if you sent me the 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 application form that you filled out and and your um, cover letter. You can you know change it as you wish. But what I'm getting, I'm trying to get a, a sense of generally what you what you're interested in. Again, um, what you will find is most likely is you. I've distilled the information. I took the information from there, basically distilled it into bullet points, and basically put it into into your Word document. But um, obviously, it still gets gives you a better feel of for the personality and uh, and the and the greater context of where they come from. Yes, um, Bilge. Uh, well, please treat my suggestion as just a brainstorming, and um, uh, it just came about to me as Professor Mariani was explaining. Uh, I mean, would you think it would be better for the first session instead of us meeting with? Our designated uh, people or designated people. Why don't we have a session where Professor Mariani could talk about the juicy stuff of how ESA came about and and what they did and and what was the you know what is different in. I, I was hoping that he would do that in the in, the, in our general <laughs> orientation next Friday if, if he's so willing to. we will also to. hear that. Um, but or or should we? Yeah, I mean, I know, I know that it's a. Uh, we will need to keep it to to keep to some time. So um, that's that's just the yeah. question. We could. I mean, it depends on him too, right? So we don't want to settle him with with over 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 uh, workload. But obviously, if he's willing to do that for maybe forty minutes and then you know question answer, we can put on a, an extra uh, session <clears throat> after our uh, our uh, general orientation. It's usually just a question of you know is it would it work out for him would it work out for some of our some uh, other some of our mentors as well because you would want to be there because you're actually see you have your own slice of you know the last 20 years um you know you may may have five years or 10 years and he's you know he's basically seen it uh most of it go down so um and then how how much the the mentees can can do that but yeah that's at it that 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 is is uh it is a great idea um just just in itself um yeah i mean we could have we could try to get together and of course it's very difficult because you know um folks uh, have their lives and their their health and all that so we could try to get him together with um with jane with uh jalal and basically mm -hmm. once you have once you put those three people in, in in the room together you basically get you have uh isa unfolding and and you know deconstructing itself too which is brilliant <laughs> stuff then again though i need to we need to remember that the 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 the, the articulation of uh, from the not from our current applicants, but from the all the various other uh, emerging scholars who um, Jessica asked, the articulation was they would like to be able to slug this out themselves. They would like to be able to get into it and talk and question and ask questions amongst themselves because they are the cohort 
who are going to put their mark on the next 20 years. So I don't know. I don't know if that's uh, that's any answering. Well, exactly. But wouldn't it be nice to have to know where it started from so i mean it i i would be i mean uh i was amazed to hear the stories when i first started coming uh and when i first heard because those were my question it's like what makes this association different uh i, I mean, think i think that what we could do is have if if Giorgio is is okay to speak you know briefly um, next next Friday uh, during the orientation, and I will send send over to you the the, the structure there. Um, then to do that, and then we see we can see we can ask um, our our um, your mentees uh, if they if they have an interest in having like a full session on just that. Um, I myself will also do an American studies time machine history time machine <laughs> that will I will try to cram into five minutes all the history of American studies ever. Uh, which is going to be uh, ridiculous, but but at least it will it will give them a little bit of okay. Well, this 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 is part of it. This is part of it. This is part of it. It's not going to be IS. Uh, IS is going to be just one one sing, uh, one little little mm -hmm. blip on the screen there. Sure. I mean, I you know I'll I'll I'll, I'll be happy to do a you know very short sort of presentation if you want me to, um, which you know would as you said, be very, very brief. And then if people are more interested and, uh, um, you know, they want to learn more and or they want to talk more about this, then I'd be happy to, you know, have an extra session or whatever, you know, um, that, that'd that be fine. And, uh, and of course, you know, I mean, uh, the reason is of, on the one hand, of course, to sort of understand where we're coming from, what we've done so far, are and all that but you know from my perspective i think the most interesting thing is to offer this information so that people can bring their own sense of what they expect an international organization to do because you know obviously um we don't want to just you know reproduce the old model you know and i'm not carrying the tables of the law you know so that you know people know what they will have to do i mean the idea is simply you know this is where we come from this is how it started this is how it developed but you know we're you know what what do you think of, you know you want to do with this you know the spirit may be similar but the way it is going to unfold obviously has to be different because we live in a different world um and uh, and uh, you know i mean one thing i've learned over all these years is that this world keeps changing at a very very fast pace mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, you know it's it's obviously a truism but uh, uh it's just uh, you know constantly full of surprises <laughs> And and and, uh, and and so you you really have to sort of reprogram yourself constantly. Exactly. Oops, I I think ultimately um, the it will be there will be some sort of delicate kind of communication going on between uh, mentors and mentees about sort of what what is expected and what is what is doable. Um, and I think it's important. They will they will definitely understand um, your limitations. Do do let them know. Um, I I think also at the same time do let them know that they should be proactive. So they shouldn't think that you are a distant professor somewhere, and they shouldn't ever bother you because you're just so busy with all, everything else. Well, we have our own motivations. Some of us are also, you know, some of us may be even paid for something like this, or this might be part of part of our job, right? Um, and ultimately, it is, you know, we we are driven by from things inside to to be doing this too in some ways. Um, obviously, yeah. So um, so they should be proactive and they should be uh, engaging. Uh, and then that they should be engaging with with each other as well. I wanted to uh, address Jennifer's um, Jennifer's question. I think, and it might be also Gabby's. So, the, it looks like some folks who are in your group are actually interested in stuff that you don't necessarily do, or the the immediate one, the the immediate need would be um, would be uh, for them to be doing something else. Um, I have plans 
uh, and I will I will need to basically be contacting the people. So I have plans to to suggest that some of the, the some of your mentees be seconded. So this is a apparently something that the, the UK does sometimes. So basically to be able to be um, be uh, an addition to the organizing team um, of the of the um, uh, of both uh, um, world congresses and the next coming up world congress, uh, as well as the the uh, Rias editorial board. So I am hoping that that also will take some pressure off of, of you in terms of numbers, because they will have once you know once someone is actually integrated into the organizing team of the of the world congress, they're going to be probably in over their heads. Um, I mean, hopefully in a good way. They will have plenty of stuff to do and think about and kind of, okay, and choose to choose from. So um, we do have some things that are quite pressing needs, yet at the same time, it's important for uh, for, for those organizers <laughs> and those editors to sort of realize that we're not talking about we're just getting free labor. We're talking about trying to sort of be mindful of these are professional challenges and, and professional development that we're that we're doing with the, with the with those those mentees and those fellows who are who are willing to really engage in in the, in those immediate organizing and work. Anything else? Because I I'm I'm aware that we've gone almost half half time uh, half hour over time, so we need to be letting you go. I will be sending out the uh, my the rest of my script to you, so you can just uh, briefly glance through uh, some of the code of conduct, my my tips uh, or uh, my my uh, my recommendations for that, and then I will be bothering people um, who I will be interested in speaking um, at next uh, next Friday's uh, orientation, if you can. Obviously, I can only Im I imagine how you know difficult it is from the different from that 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 far time zones um if you can't attend the the general orientation uh we might for for if we have time and hopefully we'll have time to have like the briefest introductions of, of yourselves as mentors uh in there um obviously that the focus will be on sort of figuring out or uh, helping mentees understand what this is about because it's uh it can be quite bewildering um for them probably even more than for you so um anyway so i'll be i'll be in touch and i'll be i'll be bothering people um feel free to start contacting your mentees and and uh and see what um um after the the orientation what session you will want to be uh, when you will want to, to do a session for them and also think about that at that pretty soon you will want to or you might want to just remind them that there is a, a world congress and the the call for papers is open um and that they should be thinking about both in terms of well what the emerging scholars forum they would be interested in doing so as a sort of a cohort uh with jessica uh as well as um what what paper you they want to they want to uh send in um uh, so yeah so there's plenty of things to uh, to be reminding each other of um, anything else. We can also do that in our introductory session next week as well. That we could, you know, we could so that they will have fifteen about two more weeks to think about uh, if they are. One, I have one more question about that. that just to to you all, um, if someone can check check on the ISO website uh, and the the call for papers. Um, for the last, uh, I think, day, my my browser hasn't been able to load it. So uh, if you can, if first, someone, someone... I think thirty first of May. Yeah, but the, the, that that it actually works because I'm I'm just worried that if if uh, hopefully the 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 website didn't go down, but my my uh, my uh, browser hasn't been able to to load it. So just check on that. If if, if it turns out that it's something, there's something's wrong with it, then we we'll need to figure out what you know who we contact, uh, especially in Pavel's absence. So otherwise, I am very, very grateful to you. Um, um, you know that what you do and what you will be doing with this mentoring um, uh, hopefully will have really, really good, really good effects. And some of it will be immediate and some of it will be will take years and years to click uh, in people's minds. And I hope that uh, but I hope that you will be inspired and, and energized from this. So 
Um, otherwise, well, thank you so much. And uh, you know, feel free to shoot me an email if you have anything, uh, any questions. Myself as well as well as uh, as well as uh, 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 just before I want to make sure that right I put up our email addresses so my my mine and uh, there we go and Jessica's so thank you very much I really appreciate thank it you, George yeah thank you take you. care <laughs> have a good thank night you. good morning good afternoon yeah. thank you so <laughs> much. Bye, bye. Take care. Take care. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, I can stop sharing. I mean, stop recording now, right? Yep. <laughs> Where did I do that? Okay. Okay. Uh,